Red Eyes Radio. My name is Henrik Palmgren. Thank you for tuning in. We are back from the UK, as you might know. We spent a couple of days in Bath at the Art Convention and a few days in Bristol recently recording a Red Eyes TV program on occult symbolism in corporate logos. We are currently editing our third episode, though, on Illuminati symbolism in movies. And uh, this will be available soon on RedEyesCreations.com. It's good to have you all with us. We are going to spend an hour now talking with PhD Michael Noah Motner. He is a research professor at the Department of Chemistry at Virginia Commonwealth University. We uh, stumbled over an article on FISORG.com a while back with the title We Have a Moral Obligation to Seed Universe with Life. Uh, this article featured an interview with Michael and we are interested in talking more with him about his ideas and the research when it comes to panspermia. Uh, this is about the seeding of life on other planets. We are now technologically at a point where we have the ability to also send microbial life from this planet to other worlds out there in space in order to perpetuate life. Uh, the theory also goes that life on this planet actually started in this way. Uh, we are going to talk about how this could be done, where in space or uh, rather to what planet we could send it, what the reasons for this is. And obviously the question of uh, morals comes into this picture as well. Is this the right uh, thing to do and what would the consequences of this be? Uh, hi Michael, uh, welcome to the program. First, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background in terms of astronomy and uh, cosmology before we go into the idea of panspermia. Well, uh, my background, I am actually a, a physical chemist. I'm not an astronomer, uh, and I do my research is in the area of uh, reactions of ions, ionized gases, and one of the applications is in certain aspects of uh, certain reactions that uh, uh, happen in space. But uh, apart from that, I have been interested in uh, space, life in space, and how to secure life on Earth by going to space, and this subject uh, since the mid-1970s, really. Um, uh, more recently, I uh, have been working along with a soil science department in uh, New Zealand here, and I had an occasion to look at uh, uh, how living organisms respond to meteorites, which is actual samples of materials from space. Mm. And so I had some uh, both kind of theoretical research and experimental research in relation to how life could exist in space. Mm. Very interesting. Uh, and so tell us a bit about the idea of, of uh, panspermia and how far how far back that goes. And, and when you stumble up upon uh, this theory yourself, because it's it's really we'll get into more in detail in terms of what panspermia is a little bit later. But uh, when did you first come across uh, this uh, theory, Michael? Well, um, there are, let me say there are two aspects of, of panspermia. One is that life spreads in space by itself uh, through various mechanisms. And uh, that has been uh, around since, uh, speculated on since the time of the ancient Greeks. But more recently, uh, Lord Kelvin, a very famous uh, British scientist, mm -hmm. picked it up and uh, argued about it, that rocks carry microbes around in space from planet to planet. Uh, the Swedish, uh, great Swedish chemist, uh, Svante Arrhenius, was one of the great proponents of, of this theory also. Mm. And uh, uh, I don't want to mention this, Fred Hoyle, the also a uh, British astronomer, who uh, also very much... Uh, and his co-worker uh, Vikramasinghe uh, from India. Uh, they were very much of proponents that this happens naturally. However, there is no evidence whatsoever so far that there is any life in space at all. Uh, there might well be, but we really don't know. Now, the other uh, idea is uh, that to reverse this process in a way, and that's of course directed panspermia. Well, it was first posted by Carl Sagan actually in his, in his book Intelligent Life in the Universe, and then um, and the key article was by uh, Orgel and Crick, Leslie Crick, Leslie Orgel, Orgel and Crick, mm -hmm. uh, the of DNA, and he 
suggested that maybe life can transpire through other civilization, uh, you know, sending life to here. Hmm. Uh, I kind of came up with this idea in the reverse uh, about the same time by myself and then found these articles. And my concern was that life is endangered on Earth, and uh, this was in the 70s with a uh, nuclear arms race and so on. And so it seems very uh, wise to maybe uh, make sure that life will continue whatever happens on Earth. And then, I, then that's how I started to work on the subject. Mm, very interesting. So uh, you mentioned a few names there. It's been it's been an, an ancient theory, and that's sense then it uh, goes back a long time but uh, what do you think then that that life if we begin in this end uh, here on earth might have come from uh, either directed panspermia or, or somewhere some something else that in, in terms of we have this theory that um, microbes and, and things like that are, are trapped in in asteroids and, and consequently when they come into a, uh, a biosphere which which has the um, um, properties uh, to sustain life, then that's how life began uh, on on each planet. Do you think that that's true, Michael? Do you think that we, uh, the life might have come from outside and and uh, and, and started up in that way here on on our planet? What do you think, Michael? Um, it is possible. Again, uh, we don't know. Um, there are many who believe now that if there are conditions anywhere for life to get started the right chemistry, uh, that it will almost always happen. Um, I happen to be on the other side of the argument. Um, the, key, the key concept is, which is also leads into my general philosophy uh, and ethics about this question, is that a microorganism, even, even a microbe, a single microbe, microscopic little organism, is an incredibly complex creature. Mm-hmm. Uh, in order for it to function, there are thousands of, of enzymes, DNA, membranes, energy mechanisms. Um, all of these things have to be so very, very complex and precisely shaped molecules that all have to be there at the same time. If one is missing, you know, you have a disease or you have an organism that cannot function. Yes. So you have an incredibly complex uh, mechanism in a, even a, a single cell. The probability for that to come together, even in a very primitive way, for be able to to perform all of these functions, that probability might be very very small. So even if there are billions of, of planets out there, let's say in a galaxy, um, that the conditions are right. But if the chance of that is one in a hundred trillion or something like that, um, it's very unlikely that it will happen. And it happened here. It doesn't mean that it will happen. It happens somewhere else. Mm. So, so basically, basically, we just we just don't know. If if it is true that that life began elsewhere and not here, we st- we're still stuck with the uh, the mystery though of of where did it begin in the first time, right? We still have that problem to to tackle, so to speak. Exactly. That, that does not solve the, the, the question of the origin of life, which is really one of the, probably the most important outstanding question in science that hasn't been answered yet. Yeah. Um, and we 